So long before the privacy fences, the deck, the sidewalks, the flower beds, the pool, and the endless decorating on the exterior of our place, there was a simple need for space. And space at that time was all I had in my mind. I needed to protect my tools and equipment for maintaining our farm from both inclement weather and theft. So I initially began researching shipping containers for their robust durability. Um, and admittedly, they were really getting popular amongst the hobby farmer and the prepper crowds. They're weather tight, durable, and extremely cost effective. I didn't really concern myself with the glum exterior look because quite frankly, I couldn't build an equivalent space the same size for the same cost, not even close. The exact dimensions of my container are 40 feet in length, nine feet wide, and nine and a half feet tall on the exterior, 40 feet long, uh, eight feet wide and eight feet ten inches tall on the interior just in case you're ever or we're considering maybe getting something like this you can look that up online real easy and get all the base dimensions of these products so I wanted real quickly <clears throat> to walk you through what I did prior to the shipping container being delivered to our property I had probably a week notice maybe a little more before uh, the shipping container was scheduled to arrive. So I graded an area on our property as close to level as I could get it. I had some railroad ties laying around on the property already. So I laid those out in the shape of a horseshoe. Um, the measurement being outside to outside was this, uh, the same exact dimensions as the outside exterior measurement of the shipping container and I don't remember what that was at the moment so I laid these out I then spray painted a line to where I could see where these were actually laying and then moved them and dug a trench and buried these railroad ties in the ground leaving only approximately three inches sticking above the soil line and I did that so that they'd be solid and that they'd stay in place. Now, I leveled these as I went, too. So keep in mind that they're in solid soil. They're level and they're giving me a, you know, a three inch lip above the soil line. Here's why. Once I did that and had those pushed into place, I packed the dirt in around the edges. Then I filled this entire center up with gravel. And the reason why I did that was just to, to keep, kind of keep critters out of there and to give a good firm bed for the container to actually rest on. I didn't put anything across here because when they delivered it, they brought it, backed it in this way on their trailer and set it right down on these with the doors of the 40 foot container facing forward. And there's so much going on on the front of a shipping container with the hinges and the swivels for the doors and all that, that I didn't want anything down here to impede the operation of the doors of the container itself. That's it. It works really good. Whether that's right or wrong, it's been there for several years now without any problems. And this is what I chose to do because it was cost effective and I already had all the stuff. So the container arrived a few days later and was set on the pad and then I began the arduous task of moving or migrating all of my tools equipment and materials into the container and then played musical chairs with everything um, until I had a workable fluid space that I could not only navigate through but that I could make use of every available inch of that interior space it's all based on cubic feet so it there is some challenges 
but I made it work. So once the initial interior design was in play, I set my mind on, let me rephrase that, I naively set my mind on improving the overall aesthetics of the exterior of this container with the hopes of an end result resembling a barn. <laughs> I had no idea what lay in store. There's a lot of work involved. So I knew I wanted a peak roof on the container. I attached two by sixes on each side at the top that ran the full length uh, to support the roof rafters and along one side at the bottom to support uh, the floor joists for a future deck. I used four inch self-tapping screws that I'm going to show you a picture of and the uh, sheet metal and steel on this container is thick enough that you have to use a pilot hole first. They were widening the highway not far from my house and I was able, just by asking, to get all the telephone poles that I wanted delivered and set at my property. They dropped them off and then I cut some to length with my chainsaw and dug and buried those and cemented those in the ground to support as the post supports for my deck roof. I then cut the excess overhang on the upper rafters, leaving enough to tie my deck roof rafters or uh, supports to, as well as connecting to the 2x6s that were pre-mounted on the container to give me double strength. FYI, we've experienced 80 miles an hour windage with no problems whatsoever. I then attached the deck floor joists for the deck and added the flooring. We stupidly left two trees in place along the side of the container that protruded through the roof on the deck. Uh, my wife had seen that in a picture somewhere. And though it looked kind of cool, it quickly became a problem. So we later removed those. Once everything was dried in, I dug a circular hole in the yard out in front of the deck. I brought in some stone and dry stacked around it for a cheap fire pit and I also stacked stone underneath the deck all the way around to keep critters out. Wow! What a job this was. After the dust settled we took a long break relaxing around the fire pit and enjoying the deck and watching the deer in the evenings and just living life. We had a wet year the following spring and even experienced some flooding. We're high and dry, but the route in got a little difficult. That's the price you pay for living in the river bottoms. Life happens, and while all of this was happening, keep in mind that we still had to run our farm. There was a pasture to clear and firewood to cut, split, and stack for winter equipment to maintain, home maintenance. We had miniature horses, miniature donkeys, and goats to take care of, time with the grandkids, time with the, our children, decorating for the holidays. And when I say decorating for the holidays, I mean every holiday. It's a delicate balance to make time for everything in your life and still find time for yourself for your hobbies like hunting or working out. It's hard to be the conductor for the symphony of your life and also be the guy that's playing all the instruments. And occasionally my body says, enough. Who cares? But with every sunrise comes new hope revived energy, and for me, ideas. So one day, a couple of years down the road, I had a desire to close in the deck and make for myself a man cave. Damn right. A space to call my own, 
or I could smoke a cigar and stare at my deer heads, argue with my inner dialogue and wrestle with my spirit without somebody yaw yawing in my ear. Suck it up, Mary Lou. So I had to wait for the perfect time. So the perfect moment finally presented itself. My wife was out of state visiting her family. And I purposely waited for this moment because I knew that the demo and the mess would make her anxious. I wanted to put in a dormer, which I had never done before. She knew that. And so I waited till she was gone. And when I was sure that she made it there safely, I started dismantling stuff. And it was a mess. Luckily, I got the framing done and the dormer put in place and the outer walls dried in before she got home. She never saw the mess. She never heard the golf words <laughs> that I said often while this process was taking place. And she was pretty happy too when I offered to split the real estate in half with her and forfeit some of my man cave space so that she could have a space of her own too. Uh, if you've ever seen a woman give birth, it, it changes you forever. And that woman has more than earned her place of royalty in this household. I found an old Dodge hood on Craigslist that I used for the porch. It worked out fantastic. We also found a uh, a door that matched our front door on our home on sale at Lowe's along with some of the windows um, and the rest is history. I built out her side first just because I love her. I'm standing in her space right now and it's a grand reflection of that woman's taste. She loves color. She loves wild designs. Mine is more utilitarian and guyish, but um, back to the form follows function. This is the perfect example. A structure should reflect the activities that take place within. This is form follows function and so is mine. Um, eventually, I set my eyes on the other side of the shop because I wanted a place that I could change the oil in my vehicles and maintain my vehicles my tractors without laying in the gravel all the time so we moved on to step 10. <laughs> so on the other side of the shipping container i didn't have to worry about building a deck floor because it was going to be a cement slab so i didn't have to put a runner down on the bottom i was out of telephone poles because i used my leftover poles to do the rest of my fencing on the property to use for corner posts. So I planted four by four posts in the ground. I cemented them because I knew there wasn't going to be much weight involved. And I built a roof that was 10 feet wide and 40 feet long. And then I began the arduous task of making sure that I was as close to level or that I could pour a semblance of a slab to level. And put in my wire and get ready for concrete. We had the concrete delivered and I had rented a little gas powered Georgia buggy because they couldn't get it back underneath my roof line far enough to use the cement truck and the troughs to pour it. So I had to track in and out with my Georgia buggy. I bit off more than I could chew, and I would highly recommend if you're going to do a slab like that, you're better off at the end of the day just to pay a bunch of guys to come in and do it. But I was working on a budget, and I was able to pour that slab for about two grand, and it would have cost me over twice that, maybe three times that if I would have had it done. So, as usual, I thought I was Superman. Superman! Help! And, and went ahead and tried it. It doesn't look that bad considering that I'm not a cement guy. 
It's 10 feet wide, 40 feet long, and 5 inches thick because I knew I was going to be pulling a big old heavy tractor up on that. At the end of the day, I could have got by with 4 inches probably just fine. And that's it. That's a wrap. I hope that this video gave you some insight. I hope it gave you some pointers to save you some of the headache that you might go through. It sounds uh, scary probably to some people and I fly by the seat of my pants most of the time. I, I take chances and sometimes I get halfway in and realize I screwed up. But by that time you're out to sea and you better know how to dog paddle for a long time. So I just keep on stroking and I don't mind pulling favors and I don't mind asking questions. This is a five out of five on a on a build like this it takes a lot of time takes some money but a whole lot of manual labor if you try something like this on your own and you run into problems email me okladoma at outlook.com and we'll get together give me your contact info send me some pictures and i'll do everything i can to help you it's not anything that you got to be afraid of except the challenge you can do this and just go with it. Sometimes that's what it takes. And you know what? Being out of your comfort zone and being a little scared, sometimes that gets the creative juices flowing. You'll find out how far you can really swim. You can find out what you can lift. And you'll find out how mentally strong you really are if you're willing to accept that challenge. I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in to Oklahoma, and I hope you'll come back and see me. Toot toot! We're getting ready to do another video where I'm going to show you the interior of this and possibly go through an interior walkthrough of our home. You're going to be fascinated by the decorating skills that my beautiful wife has. Till next time, I'll see you.